Hello, how is everybody? It is, what night is tonight? Wednesday night, I think, and um, going live. So I hope that there's a few of you there. Say hi if you're watching. Um, kiddos, if you're watching with your moms, feel free to leave a comment and uh, tell me your name, ages, if you're comfortable with that. And um, I would just love to hear what your thoughts are on the study. So um, if you guys are following along, um, feel free to do that. And I'm going to be sharing just a little bit tonight. Isaac is not with me tonight. I gave him the option if he wanted to go live or not. I'm going to do something funky with the camera here. So if you're watching, oh, let's see if this works. Maybe, maybe not. Nope. <laughs> Taking you guys on a little wild ride tonight. Okay, let's try that. All right, let's see if that works. Um, Isaac had the option to not go live tonight and he took that option, but he did tell me today that since this is a mom and me challenge, he feels like we should both be doing the challenge. So he's planning to be here tomorrow night. That's the word that I have. So kids, if you're watching, um, Isaac will be here tomorrow and um, he would love to hear your thoughts as well. We've been enjoying seeing the pictures and the emails that are coming in. Um, so yeah, I think that's all. I'm gonna. Let's see, what does this tell me? Okay, technology. All right, I have a couple thoughts for moms and I have a couple thoughts for kids tonight. And I shared earlier that I thought this would be a really good night if you are older kids that you might wanna watch this video. Moms, I said that. Um, so if you're watching and your kids aren't, feel free to invite them because I think that especially the older kids may be to, able to engage tonight. Um, in the email this morning, I talked about, um, again, just keeping it simple. Uh, I gave a link for those of you that are following along uh, for an audio dramatized version of scripture that you might want to listen to and feel free to click on that link. Um, super, I love that version and I'm actually going to, I haven't done it yet with Isaac, but we're going to listen to it together. Um, if you have kids that learn well by um, hearing and um, process that way, then that can be a really good way to sort of mix things up as well. But again, don't feel like you have to. The simpler the better, the more likely that you are to repeat it too. Um, so just do me a favor, I see somebody's there, say hi, give me a thumbs up so I know you can hear me okay. Um, and let's see, so I, one thing that I wanted to talk about is I suggested, oh hey, my hubby's there. <laughs> um, I suggested sharing a little bit about your journey with your husband, if you're married, um, with a family member, with a friend, having your kids do that as well. And I'm gonna talk a little bit to more, a little bit more tonight about why that's a good idea and how that can actually help us with learning God's word. But one thing I just wanna say um, to moms that I hope maybe you're starting to discover is kind of two sides of the same coin. And that is one, you might be realizing that it's a good idea if you come to the scriptures beforehand, the night before you go to bed or earlier in the day before you sit down with your kids, because um, you are going to find so much richness in the scripture that you may be inspired to share with your kids. Um, and at the same time, I also hope you're discovering that it's totally okay to learn right alongside your kids. You don't have to come to the table like a magical superhero, Sunday school teacher um, with all the answers. In fact, it's really good for your kids to see you learning with them. So if you don't know the answers to a question or if you don't know the meaning of a word, dig in together, look it up. Say It's okay to say, I don't know the answer to that. Um, so I hope that you're being encouraged by that, maybe challenged to get into the word a little bit more yourself, but also encouraged that um, you can learn right alongside your kids and you don't have to have all the answers in advance. Okay, so one thing I wanna kinda touch on tonight, and I'm gonna actually um, share this in the email and a little bit more in depth tomorrow. And kiddos, if there's little ones watching, hang in there, cause we're gonna talk uh, to you in just a minute, but I wanna just talk for a second about stages of learning. I know that there are some moms with little tiny, you know, toddlers that are doing this study, and I also know that there are some moms with teenagers doing the study. And so, um, if that's the case, I wanna talk for just a second about how we learn, how we process um, the things that we're taking in that might give you a little bit of insight in how to make the time with your kids more meaningful, whether it's studying the Bible or whether it's uh, studying anything else. Um, and that is that uh, this is, and I'm using drawing from uh, an understanding of classical education here when I share what I'm about to share. But there are kind of three to four stages of learning that are um, generally most of us walk through in a, in a sort of standard way, set ages. 
Um, and that is what we call early grammar, late grammar, dialectic, and rhetoric. Now, if you are traditionally schooled, you know this probably more along the lines of elementary school, middle school, high school. And there's a couple of really cool things about how we learn in the different stages that um, if you can hang in there with me, I think they'll really encourage you in studying with your kids anything, but especially in God's word. And that is in the early grammar stages, in the elementary years roughly, we kind of take in concrete information. These are the stages when we just memorize things. If you have little toddlers, you might be just marching around the room saying, Jesus loves me. You might sing the song, Jesus loves me. But it's just taking in concrete information. Um, some people s describe it as having uh, hooks in the wall that you're nailing into the wall. And when you get a little bit bigger, you're gonna hang things on those hooks. The second stage of learning is what we, uh, in classical education, refer to as dialectic. And that's the analytical stage. If you have middle schoolers, and maybe even if you have mm, advanced toddlers, you know this stage as the arguing stage. They wrestle with everything. They debate everything. And sometimes when our kids get to this age, we start to accept this idea, oh, they argue with everything. They're so difficult. And we see that as a negative thing. But actually, when we're learning, this is really important part of our cognitive process, the way that we learn. We have to wrestle with things. We have to argue with things. If you have middle schoolers, you want them to ask questions. You want them to test everything because if what they're learning is true, and I believe that God's word is true, then when they test it, it will be validated. It will validate itself. We kind of touched on that last night and we'll touch on that again tonight. But that's a good place for them to be and we want them to argue, we want them to wrestle with that information. And then they come to what we call the rhetoric stage in um, classical education. And I'm giving, by the way, a very simplified um, explanation of this. But the wisdom stage, that's the stage where they have got this information, they've started to process it, they've tested it, they've wrestled with it. Do I really believe the stuff that mom and dad believe? Do I really believe the stuff that the pastor preaches every Sunday or that the youth pastor talks about? They've gotten started to move through that and they've started to accept some of the things that they believe. Now they've wrestled with that and now they're gonna process that information and they're gonna start to live it and teach it. And generally speaking, high school, early college, this is um, that season of life. And so that's important to understand because it can kind of affect how we approach scripture with our kids, how we approach life with our kids. And I'll give you a couple practical examples. If you have a two-year-old, you're maybe in the stages of potty training, don't touch that, eat this, very concrete, very factual. Middle school-ish, late elementary school, um, we're really wrestling with, but why do I have to do that? Why do we have these rules? Why can't I, whatever it is that my friends are doing? Um, so they're processing that, they're wrestling with that information and that's actually a good thing. Now, we can teach them to do that with respect um, and that's something I'm gonna get into in another place and I'll touch on that tonight as well. Um, we want them to do that with respect but we do want them to wrestle and argue with those things. That's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. Why is a good question and then and once they get to that high school stage, um, late high school, the wisdom stage, early college, that's when they're starting to take those things that they've learned and they're now starting to believe and put them into practice. So it's not just that mom and dad said I can't stay out until um, midnight or one o'clock in the morning, but I need to have a bedtime because I have to get up in the morning and go to class. Or it's not just that mom and dad or the country says it's illegal for me to drink at a certain age, but I need to be responsible with the things that I put into my body so that I can live a life of honor and dignity. Um, so that's just kind of a, a quick overview, um, but I think that that will help you as you're going through this study. In that, you can take some of these things that we're talking about. We are doing Ephesians. Ephesians 1 is a meaty, hefty chapter full of all of the basics of understanding the gospel and Jesus and um, his salvation of us. And so we can break those concepts down based on the level of learning that our kids are at. So just a little bit um, briefly kind of explaining that. Also, um, it's a good idea to have some understanding of the way that your kids learn. Um, love languages, there's a book called The Five Love Languages. We just studied about this last week uh, with some good friends who taught it to uh, a camp that we were at. 
Um, are your kids touchy feely? Do they learn when they're snuggled up? My Isaac, if you've seen us doing these videos, you know he that boy will do anything for a scratch back. Um, and I raise them that way. I've brainwashed all my kids to be touchy feely. Um, maybe your child is more of an up and doing and moving kind of a person. Um, and so thinking through how do they learn? How do they? Um, understand love, how they feel love. If you can incorporate some of those things into the time that you spend with them, you're going to get a lot further in them being able to grasp these concepts. But again, I want to go back and say, if you have young ones, it's totally okay if all you're doing is reading those verses out loud and then maybe you have one or two quick things that you're going to um, repeat back. And I'll show you just a really, really simple quick craft that we did. Um, Christy shared on one of our videos already this week. Christy, thank you so much. A uh, craft that she did with her two-year-old, which was beautiful and precious, just processing some of those big concepts in little bites. But having said that, if you have a middle schooler, wrestle through this. Um, I said this before, but gently push them um, to stretch a little bit further, to go a little bit more than where they're maybe comfortable in having discussions about these concepts. And if you have a high schooler, a college age um, child who's doing this with you, Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. What an incredible blessing. Um, we have young adults that are in our home for the summer, back from college and work, and the discussions that we have, I would not trade them for anything. So keep that conversation going wherever they're at. Um, wrestle with these concepts together. Okay, so um, also just when I had mentioned it's, not, it's a good time for them to share some of those concepts. There's a couple reasons for that. As you guys are going through this study, mamas, this is an incredible gift. Um, don't keep this to yourself. If you are married, share this study with the kid's dad. Make sure that you have his blessing. Um, if he doesn't know the Lord, if he isn't into reading scripture, just tell him some of these conversations that you're having. It's an amazing way to connect as a married couple. It's also an incredible way for your children to bond with their dad, for dad to have the opportunity to step in and um, leadership with them. But also, when we teach other people something, we learn it even more. Part of the reason that I like to do live videos and teach um, scripture and teach Bible studies, and this is tip of the iceberg. We're not even going deep. Um, we are going deep because it's God's word, but I'm not going into a lot of detail as far as how I'm teaching. But man, does it kick my tail um, when I am trying to explain concepts to my kids or to someone else or when I know other women are listening. It makes me really go deeper and study. And it will do the same for your kids. Even if you have a three-year-old, you they can repeat back. Tell me what, you know, what did we learn? God chose us or um, everything comes together in Jesus or God holds all things in his hand. They can repeat those things back and that's actually a way that they're learning. If you have middle schoolers and high schoolers, oh my gosh, they can go deep by repeating those concepts back. Expl explain to their friends, explain to dad, give them those opportunities to walk out what they're learning so that it's not just eating and getting chubby on the stuff that we're taking in, but it's processing it and using that information. Okay, so having said all of that, I just wanna um, really quick, kids, um, if you are watching and you're doing this with me, I wanna show you just a couple of things, that ideas that we had um, the concepts, there were several really big concepts in Ephesians 1, 11 to 14 that we read today, but a couple that jumped out to us were um, the believers when we hear and believe, that's when we are saved. And that's one of the things that Paul talks about in this passage, um, having heard and believed then you received salvation through Christ. And so those two things are really important. We don't just want to hear what we're reading, but we want to believe it. So if you're teaching little ones, and I'm going to kind of illustrate right now um, the way you can take some of these concepts and make them real. Um, well, actually, let me go through those main points real quick. So having heard and believed, they were sealed. And you guys might have read that if you've already read the passage today. The word tells us in this chapter, um, in these verses, 11 through 14 of Ephesians 1, the Holy Spirit was given to us to seal us. And there's a really cool concept. If you have a concordance, I want to encourage you to dig it out. And this is where we're going to go deeper if you're a mama or if you have older kids. Um, that uh, word, some one of the words that's used there is a deposit guaranteeing. In the same way, and we talked about this, Isaac and I did earlier today, when you go to buy a house, you put a down um, payment as a deposit. You're promising, kiddo off camera here. 
<laughs> you're promising the person who owns that house that you're going to buy that house. You're putting a down payment. Another illustration that Isaac and I talked about um, at the Bible conference, the camp where his daddy works, when you go to uh, use the ping pong paddles, you have to leave a piece of collateral. You have to give them something to prove that you're gonna bring back the ping pong paddles. And in the same way, the word tells us that God gave us the Holy Spirit to promise that he's coming back for us, that he's going to save us, save us and keep us all the way until we're united with Christ. Um, and then one other thing that really jumped out to us that we talked about is kind of revisiting what we talked about yesterday. God works all things according to his will. And that might be something if you have younger ones, you can repeat back and forth. God works all things according to his will. Um, really simple statement but huge concept especially when we start to get a little bit into the older ages and things start happening that we don't understand middle school huh rough years uh, my neighbor and i have talked about this a lot she's got one that's getting ready to go into middle school and she's rightfully nervous because that's a hard time of life so having this concept god works all things according to his will is really important to have cemented in their mind so you can revisit it later when things don't work according to our will. Um, and so I just wanted to show you, and I asked Isaac's permission to share this tonight. Um, this was the worksheet, and I, let's see if you can see that. And I think you can see that, yeah. Um, we worked on today with this passage of scripture, and you can see he's nine. We did not write a million sentences here. Um, but one thing that I thought was really cool is um, he wrote down, they heard and believed, in all caps, because the and believed part was important. Um, but also, he wrote down, let's see if you can see that there, um, the Psalm 33, 1, or 33, 11, we just took the bottom of my study Bible and we looked up some verses that um, correlate to the topics that we were learning. And sorry, I'm looking all funky places tonight. I'm struggling with the camera. Um, but he wrote down Psalm 33, 11, his plans, let's see, his plans stand firm forever, stand with a T, stand firm forever. And then as we were um, writing that down, he said, that reminds me, mom, of what we talked about yesterday, that God promises the mystery that he reveals to us is that all things to come together in Christ. And so he wrote that down in the section below. And then I did not tell him to do this. He drew the arrow because in his mind, those two things connected. And he said, it really is cool to me. Sorry, that went right all of a sudden. Um, it's really cool to me that all those things come together, that God's plans will happen and that all things will come together in Christ. Um, so I thought that was kind of neat just his way of processing and he gave me permission to share that um little guys if you're watching or if mamas if you're watching simple way this um i talked about the early grammar stage or the grammar stage um literally draw a heart color it in and that idea of the sealing of the holy spirit or the deposit guaranteeing i'm just folding this in half okay or folding that closing it up sealing it and then literally take a sticker and stick it on there and, and explain, we seal up the promise. God seals our hearts. You can say the words with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit seals our hearts, okay? Simple, 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 simplified version. This is not um, upper level theology, but it's getting big concepts into little bite-sized pieces that they can grasp. So that would be something you could do with little ones. And then um, taking that, as I was showing you that next stage, what Isaac did, he just wrote and he processed. The older they get, the more they're be, they'll be able to write. Um, that middle stage, that dialectic, that wrestling and arguing stage, wrestle with your kids. Use that as an opportunity. Um, look in the, the section of your Bible. If, the, if you have a section that has notes or that links things together, go on to a site like BibleGateway.com or Blue Letter Bible and um, look up what are some other verses. And all I do is I just take one concept. Um, God's, uh, I'll look up the word predestination or I'll look up um, conformity, everything in conformity or God's will is done and look for verses and then use that as an opportunity to discuss that, to let the word validate itself so that their minds can process that. Um, and then finally, if you have older kids, and this is something that we do a lot in my house, one of the ways that we learn, that we cement what we're learning is to teach somebody else. Um, I said that before, I learn so much when I'm studying to teach other people. So if you have older kids, have them teach these concepts to their younger siblings. Um, let them have the chance to walk that out to explain that because that helps to cement those concepts in their mind. 
Ask them to write it out. Ask them to write out an explanation of what does this mean? What does that mean that the Holy Spirit seals us? So big, big concepts today, um, but we can bring them down to bite-sized pieces for whatever age our kids are at, um, whatever learning style they have, we can kind of process that. I do want to um, give you guys just a little bit of a heads up. I am working on um, a sort of mentoring program class that I'm going to share a little bit more about in the next couple of days. But if you want to take these concepts and go deeper, I'm going to be starting a private Facebook group, uh, also a weekly video. We're going to do a four-week um, mentoring go round program, I don't even know what to call it yet, um, class, I guess, where we're going to dig a little bit deeper into some of these concepts of um, the ages, the, the stages of learning, the ways that our kids learn, and um, not even necessarily just with reading the Bible, but what are some ways that we can be mamas who engage meaningfully in our kids' lives, building relationship with them, going deeper with them than we really even thought they could go at any given age. If that's something you're interested in, um, shoot me an email back and reply to the emails that went out this morning, and I'll be giving you a little bit more information about that over the next couple of days. I hope this is encouraging you to you guys, and um, I want to thank you, little guys, if you're watching with your moms. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Keep reading God's Word because you're going to learn more and more about His love for you. And tomorrow, we're going to study about Paul's prayer for the Ephesians and a way that we can pray for ourselves too and how we interact with God and how we live our lives. Um, so don't um, hesitate to share if you are gaining from what you're learning in the videos. It's not too late to sign up. You can still sign up and the link is on the Dancing With My Father page. Um, you'll get the emails. I'm working on sending out the emails from the first couple of days to those who just signed up. Um, so feel free to keep signing up. And um, like I said, I'm just so thankful that you guys are here. I'm thankful that you're doing this journey and I really love hearing how um, you're gaining from it too. So see you tomorrow night and uh, Lord willing, I'll have another little blonde child with me tomorrow and uh, we'll do keep on going with the study. We're on day three, done with day three, day three and we've got two days left. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night.